Well, thank you very much. Uh, thanks for having me. Thanks, Christoph. And um, I want to talk about Grunt.js and especially as it relates to our latest project. My name is David. I'm the co-founder of Excellent Easy, where we work on mobile web apps. So maybe some of you have tried to work with um, mobile web apps as well. And um, let's just say it's pretty hard. So we at Excellent Easy have tried basically every trick in the book, every framework that we could find, and nothing could basically well, hold up to the standards that we have for mobile applications. So what we did is we wrote our own framework. The framework um, is a very complex thing, a very big, big, large project. And um, the reason I'm here today is to talk about just one part of the framework, which is usually overlooked. So when we think about a client-side framework, we usually think about JavaScript, of course, then there's CSS. And that's basically it. So in our case, we write CoffeeScript and less, but let's be honest, that's just JavaScript and CSS at the end. Um, but what's really overlooked is the build process. And the build process is something that you can do really great with Grunt. I don't want to spend much time, especially as it's a lightning talk, talking about details or what API you could use or what code we have written. I want to talk about some of the principles that we've used. And maybe you can use these, uh, these principles in your own projects, in your larger projects, <coughs> and apply them with Grunt.js. And then I want to show you some of these principles in action. So basically, um, we all know that conventions are really important. And we have heard, heard these um, buzzwords like uh, convention over configuration and things like that. And conventions are great and fine. And of course, it's an important thing. But the problem is that conventions are hard to uphold. New people come into your organization, they have to learn the conventions. Or people just forget or are in a hurry and make a mistake, and it, it keeps diluting your project's conventions. So the problem is, when you have to manually administer these conventions, and when you have to manually check that everybody stays in line, that's just really hard, and it's really annoying for everybody involved. So what you have to do is you have to automate your conventions. Whenever you can automate, you should automate. Except when your conventions are necessary in the first place, then you should, of course, just eliminate it altogether. But if you have important conventions, and these can be totally different for you, but for us it's, for example, this kind of style that we use in CoffeeScript, or the way we write our less files, or the, the way we write our commit messages even, if that's something that's important to you in your project, you should automate it. You should at least, if it's not totally in 100% automatable, you should at least automatically check if everybody stays in line and give them a nice reminder that they should stay with the conventions, but give them this, this feedback immediately. Okay, and this is basically the second principle, um, why you should use JavaScript everywhere. We've heard about JavaScript on the server today and JavaScript on the client. But there's a third thing where we can use JavaScript, and that's in your build process. That's on your own machine. And the real reason why we should do this is basically the same as on the server and client side. When we only focus on this one language that is connecting us all, then we don't have to do this context switch. It's like in everyday life talking in German, English, and Spanish randomly. It's really hard to do. You have to always context switch. And here you can just focus on this one language. You know the problems, but you also know the solutions. And so why not stay in the JavaScript world? And Grunt.js is great for that. Because Grunt.js is 100% JavaScript and it runs on Node. So that's perfect for us here as well, right? So it's not just that it's JavaScript and Node, but it's really useful as well for practical usefulness. Because there's a giant community, and there's countless of plugins that you can use. So if you have a use case, and you think, mm, I might do that in my build process, check it out, because there's so many plugins, and it's usually already done for you, which I really like. Um, so that's all for the slides. I want to immediately show you um, how, this, how this works in practice. So I've talked a little bit about the framework, but you really probably don't have an idea what Ready Podium is all about. So Ready 
Ready Podium comes with a short little demo application where we have all the things that, that are in Ready Podium in there. And you just saw me type in grunt server and it runs a whole series of commands. And this is the first thing which you probably didn't notice because you have seen these demos before. But it's an important point that you don't have to remember which port the application is being served on. It's just automatically being opened up in your browser. That might be saving you one second. It's really insignificant in terms of time. But just the, the act of remembering the port number and the act of going to your browser, opening a new win window or tab, is stealing your brain cycles that you need for programming. And this is one of the principles that you can immediately apply in your own build process. Think about where these small things steal your brain cycles. Okay, so this is obviously um, a mobile app or at least a demo app. So let's check out the navbar directive. So this is all based on AngularJS for anyone who uses that. And we see a bunch of navbars being demoed here. And at the first, at the first um, look of it, it might seem very simple, just a bunch of navbars. But um, it's really complex when you get into the detail, the way the buttons are distributed the way the text is always centered, but also uses the remaining space, except of the one navbar where we disabled the centering, etc. So um, this is really nice, you know, but um, could be could be uh, even nicer if we could use this on our phones, right? So that's what I'll do, real quick. <coughs> I hope this works and it's not way too big. Ah, nice, actually works. Okay, so now we have, um, yes, we do have the same, the same uh, path here, oh, god damn it. Mm. So let's, let's edit something here. Um, let's just call this, MNUC. And you see, this is on my device, automatically reloads, it automatically reloads in the browser as well. Yes, you might have seen this before, it's live reload, but um, the point here is, it's free with Grunt. There's nothing you have to really set up, it just comes with one of the plugins. You install it, you use it in your build process, it just works. Another thing you don't have to worry about. Okay, so we have seen this before, okay, nothing new yet. But um, you see this <coughs> magic button down here. If I click it, it has a crazy animation. And we switch to another platform. And um, now we see that it really looks kind of different. So if I switch again, you can see maybe the difference here. The nav bars are behaving differently. The text is displayed in a different way. The buttons are all on the right, etc. So it's um, trying to behave like a navigation bar would behave on Android. And this level of abstraction can, of course, be done in this app with this magic button, but that's not something you would usually really do in production. What you would like to do is use the app for um, iOS and only deploy the iOS components, and for Android, you only deploy the Android components. So um, let me show you how this works in an actual production app. This is actually um, running and on the App Store. So you do um, a grunt build command, and then you type in a um, colon, and this basically can be used in a grunt task that you can define yourself. So we have defined this task ourselves. The build task is not a plugin, and this is the power of grunt, where you can simply register a task. It's just a function, actually, and then you can evaluate these parameters. So the first parameter is the platform, and the second parameter is the target. So the target could either be deployed to the web <coughs> or deployed to something like Cordova or PhoneGap, which you might have heard, which is the native target. Okay, let's just build this real quick. It does a couple of things here. Of course, I said it's CoffeeScript, it's less. It does all these builds. It only includes the stuff that's relevant. And now we can open this in our browser. And there it is. Okay, nothing fancy. It's just a bunch of data on a mobile app. But now if we type in Android instead of iOS, wait for the task to complete, then we have the whole interface in Android, and this can all be done just 
with grunt. Okay, so this is just about the complexity of handling these, these complex, more complex projects. Um, but what about teamwork? Can we do something there as well? Okay, I still have my modified Nachbar um, example here. Um, but that's not really interesting. Let's just stash that and look at something else. Um, let's say I want to actually modify not just one of the views, but you know, really just, just a thing right here. Okay, let's say um, in this function, I just want to define another function. It, it really does nothing here. You know, just console log something. Okay, this is the change I want to save now. Um, can you actually see this? Yeah. Okay, so I want to commit this to my um, project. I'm really in a hurry. So um, I'm just going to type in a really bad commit message. And um, well, it doesn't allow me to commit. But actually, it's not complaining about the commit message. It's first complaining about the fact that I'm not using the style guide. I'm not, I'm not adhering to the CoffeeScript style guide. I cannot um, have empty, empty function uh, parentheses here. That doesn't make any sense. So let me try again. OK, this time it's linting and everything, but um, yeah, I'm not adhering to the commit message. So what we're seeing here, first time it complained about my, my style, my bad style in the code. Now it's complaining about my bad style in the commit message. This is basically um, running from a git hook, a commit hook. And from the commit hook, you can run, run your grunt commands. And this is super powerful because you can basically do everything you can imagine in a build process before you allow someone to commit to your framework. So whenever someone is filing a pull request, because this is going to be open source really soon, um, I, I will never have the problem of checking, well, did he adhere to the style guide or did he maybe mess up the commit message? I can, I can rely on this build process for me. This is really great. So um, one more thing that you see up there um, is the Semver check. And it basically says everything is in sync. And uh, this is a really nice um, anecdote that maybe what can go wrong when you screw up your releases. So um, AngularJS pushed out a bunch of new versions over the couple of weeks. And they two times in a row forgot to update the dependencies on one of their non-core uh, modules. And it, every time it breaks the Bower dependency. So when you want to install the module, it actually can't resolve the dependency. And the reason why this happens is because they have to manually go into the repository and not forget to update the dependency. And this is something you just cannot allow in your organization if you try to run enterprise JS. So that's something that you have to just include. And in this case, we do it with Semver. It checks whether the package JSON, Bower JSON is in sync. Simple as that. OK, so actually, I don't really want to commit this. But um, there's another thing I want to quickly talk about. And then maybe we have some uh, questions. I don't want to um, run this too long. So um, when we release a new version of this, um, we, we have a lot of things to do because we want to be a really great open source repo once this goes live and public. We want, don't want just to release the code and then nothing, nothing, nothing's there. It should be really great. So we have a couple of things to do before we release. But if we relied upon my brain to remember this, this would be horrible. So we actually have a release task. And I just want to show you this portion here. So yeah, in theory, this is all really simple, <coughs> but actually it's not. So we have to check that the uh, versions are in sync. We have to check that we build our change log, which is automatically built. So no, you cannot forget to write a change log or whatever. This is generated from the commit message. So we never forget to update our change log when we have a new release. Then you have to add all of these files and make sure that the distribution is really in there. So imagine you forget to build and add and commit your distribution um, build. Then people try to install it, and the changes that you actually committed aren't in the final build. That would be really bad as well, but it happened so many times before. So we just try to learn from uh, mistakes that others made, that we have made in the past. 
I hope you can use Grunge.js and these custom tasks and these plugins in your projects to make them really awesome as well. Um, if Brady Podium is something you would be interested in, we have a website, um, it's called Brady Podium, whoops, IO. Um, we are, we are taking um, signups for the private beta right now. You can find out more there. And I want to give uh, props to my co-founder, Stefan, who uh, found the only legit use case for the hue uh, randomness filter on the uh, nice chameleon there. <laughs> Thank you for listening.